Thank you very much um, for coming this evening and thank you for the opportunity to share the stage. It is a real, a real privilege uh, for us to be here. Um, so I'll speak today about the Google Cultural Institute, about what we do, um, where we work, and so on. Um, in short, it's a non-profit part of Google, okay? Um, and we create digital platforms for cultural organizations to share their stories with the world. So I'm going to take you through that platform and describe different parts of it and different projects that we work with. Um, we describe it as technologies that make the world's culture accessible to anyone, anywhere. And we kind of split this in, in two ways. Firstly is really for the culturally curious, whom I'm sure uh, many of you are culturally curious here tonight. So this is a kind of public-facing platform, website, and, and set of digital technologies that bring culture to people. But a critical part of that, and a critical part of how we operate, is creating tools for museums, tools for archaeological organizations, tools for cultural organizations of many kinds. Um, these are the things that go on behind the scenes. You can see a little glimpse here. This is a small street view trolley um, that we're taking around um, a museum, and I'll show you what that means in practice later in the presentation. Um, but I'm going to focus on the culturally curious side and talk you through what we present to, uh, to you all and how we do so. Here is the homepage of our main website at google.com forward slash cultural institute. Um, and if I just scroll down a little, um, you can immediately see there's a sort of variety of content. Um, some of this content here is from the British Museum, which I'll talk about later today. Um, but we split the content into different areas, into different kind of cultural disciplines. So on the left, we have the art project. In the center, historic moments. And on the right, uh, world wonders. So these are kind of different cultural arenas that we've brought together in a single platform, which really enable the telling, really powerful telling of cultural stories across those different disciplines and areas. So let me give you a quick glimpse um, of what it looks like inside. If we jump into the art project, I'm not going to go into great detail here, um, but we have a fascinating collection of art museums and galleries all over the world. And this is a, vi a very visually centric um, part of the website in which we show art as large as we can. Okay? And that is art ancient and modern and many different media. Back here, um, and it's worth adding, I think, that my own personal involvement um, with this project began with the art side of things. Um, I used to work for the Tate, and I was the person at Tate who started our collaboration with Google on the beginnings of the art project four years ago. And now here we are with many, many different cultural uh, disciplines and partnerships brought together. So the world of history is um, the world of history kind of um, is really interesting for us to figure out how we can deploy the same technologies that we brought to the world of art into that very different world. Because history doesn't necessarily speak for itself. The stories of history need to be told um, by you in the room, um, by historians, by archivists, by curators. So we created an exhibition platform, and I'll show you an example of that later. As I scan down this site, the first thing to notice is a great variety of stories. Each of these blocks on the screen is an individual exhibition put together by a curator at a cultural organization. We don't curate at all at Google. We build tools for curators to tell their stories to the public. And um, the third kind of channel that we have is called World Wonders. This is where we take the street view technology, the little camera that you saw at the beginning, to some of the wonders of the world, quite literally. Um, fantastic sites, fantastic locations, and it enables you to get a glimpse of these places from your home or from your school. And of course, some places much closer to home. Uh, we've got about two, two or three hundred different sites that we've taken to this treatment. So let's go into some kind of specific examples of what this means in practice. Um, an overview, really, of the collections that we have. 
is here, 891 cultural organizations that we work with. Um, and another map, we've seen a couple of maps already. I've observed that they all have the same quality, the maps that we've seen just this evening. It's worth pointing out that, of course, you can see a great density in Western Europe and in North America. Now, this is something that we... Um, so these are where all our partnerships are. But, of course, there are holes in this map. There are sparsely populated areas. And this, for us, is a kind of inspiration. Those places in the map that are empty are places where we need to be. They're places where we need to go because there are cultural stories to be told there and it's critically important that we don't just work on the easy world of Western Europe and North America. So, um, this morning, we had the great privilege of launching um, a partnership with the British Museum, um, with Neil McGregor at the British Museum, bringing together some of these technologies to be able to tell some of their stories. And I'll take you through the technologies one by one. So here, this uh, great admonitions scroll, an ancient uh, painting, We've taken what we call gigapixel photography of this object. This is ultra high resolution photography that enables you to zoom in and see it in unprecedented detail. <clears throat> so I'll zoom in now. As I'm zooming in, I'd like you to observe what's happening with the website in the background. Let me just go back a second and let me zoom in and let me zoom in again. The website has completely disappeared, okay? This is a screenshot of a website that's live today because when you have zoomed into an object as important as this, you've signaled your intention to take a closer look. You don't want to look at a website. You don't want to look at the interface of that website. You want to look at the actual object itself. And of course, with gigapixel photography, you can go much closer. If we zoom out again and keep your eye on the figure in the center, bear in mind this object is about three and a half meters long. So it's absolutely fantastic to be able to zoom in to that level of detail. Critically, of course, there's a scholarship, a set of scholarship that we need to supply alongside that, coming again from the British Museum, not from us, enabling you to have a visually centric view or a scholarly view. The second technology is the street view. So here we are inside the British Museum. It's about six in the morning, as you may be able to tell by the sky, and you've got it to yourself. You can walk around, walk around the British Museum all alone. So this is a fantastic way of using this technology to provide access uh, to a place like this. And with the map on the left, you can select other parts of the museum, of course. Um, we've scanned 84 rooms in the museum, enabling you to go and visit them with this kind of detail. Now here we are in the next gallery. <clears throat> and as you walk around, uh, you can see individual objects. And perhaps your interest is taken by a particular object. You can click the marker next to it and then zoom right in to see it in great detail and, of course, to get the scholarly information again. So this is fantastic kind of back and forth between the curatorial historical perspective inside the museum and the scholarly um, visual perspective of the photograph. And here back to the, to the three-dimensional image inside Street View, and, of course, you can see how large this object really is. <clears throat> the third part of this, really, the third kind of set of technologies is about storytelling. So the British Museum has curated six online exhibitions, uh, some of which relate to physical exhibitions that they had at the museum. And I'll just skim through this one to show you what they look like. This is the scholarship from the British Museum, um, the curator's text pulling together objects, images, um, audio and video to tell a particular story. And of course, these are all um, engaging and a wonderful way of getting a focused view on a particular topic. Um, and there's a number of different techniques that we use to bring together here. So, for example, with this object, you can play a video next to it whilst you're staring at the object to provide additional context. <clears throat> now, I've just pulled this menu down on the top left-hand side. 
because we have this big world of art, of history, of world wonders, but of course there are much more focused areas which we can take a look at culturally. And I'll take you on a, a whistle-stop tour of a couple of those. I had the great privilege earlier this year of working in Pakistan, bringing together cultural organizations. And here, if I jump into the Lahore Museum, I'll show you another form of technology that we use that enables a really interesting and powerful experience. So we're scanning through these objects from the Lahore Museum in Pakistan. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging the objects to this compare tool at the bottom. And what I've done here is I've brought together two figures of Buddha in different states. So as I zoom into them, you can see the, the figure of Buddha on the left-hand side is the traditional imagery that you might see. But the figure on right is, I think, very, very powerful and compelling and much more rarely seen. This is the famous fasting Buddha. So this is Buddha pre- and post-enlightenment. And of course, being able to have these side by side enables you to tell a very powerful story. A second kind of focus that we've done recently was collaborate with the Venice Biennale. So here, the Biennale, of course, is a, is a uniquely transitory um, experience. It's every two years, things are up for a few months, and then they're gone. But it's also unique, I think, and much more compelling in that it brings hundreds of countries together to celebrate their contemporary culture. So we collaborated with the Biennale um, using the sets of technologies that you've seen already, and we brought together 71 of the pavilions from the Venice Biennale on the platform. So these pavilions are still up, but they're actually closing in about a week, and then, of course, they'll be gone forever in the physical world, but maintained for posterity on this platform. Jumping into the Syrian pavilion, here there's exhibitions and objects brought together, curated by um, those artists and curators. And here you get a glimpse, again, using Street View, um, using the photographic imagery of what this pavilion is like, which really tells a story in time of these contemporary artists and the curator's perspective of uh, contemporary art in Syria. Now, all these things are kind of very, uh, very useful, very interesting, very powerful, engaging on the desktop web format. Um, but we recognize that more and more of us are using mobile phones in more interesting and powerful ways. So everything that you've seen is available um, on your phone, either through the mobile web or through a series of mobile applications. So we've worked with um, just over 100 of our partners to develop apps specifically for them. So you can download an app from any of these uh, partners and have their content available in your pocket at any time, which is particularly suitable for uh, when you're on the way to visit that museum, pre-visit or post-visit, or while you're there, to find out what's on and to take a closer look at it. So, when we're developing all these tools, when we're developing this innovative technology and bringing it into the world of culture, we begin, we've begun to feel a responsibility about how we do it about exactly what we do. So we created this lab. We, we've created this lab at the Cultural Institute, which allows us to develop new technologies in new powerful ways, okay? So I'll just skim through these. And this enables us to really answer difficult questions about what happens when culture and technology meet. One of the most powerful of those is this cardboard device. Here it is. It is literally a piece of cardboard. You put a mobile phone in this, and it becomes a virtual reality device, allowing children all over the world, and anyone all over the world, uh, to visit some of these locations. So I'm just going to play a very short video, just a minute and a half, about cardboard and what that means, and then we'll wrap up. Anywhere in the world that you want to go, where would you want to go? I would like to go to the moon. Thailand. Ancient Greece. India. To Nigeria, my homeland. One, or maybe all of the seven wonders of the world. When you explore different places, you have the chance to actually learn something new. You want to be able to show the kids that there's something outside of your community that you could go to and learn from, and that there's other places you can visit. 
All right, so let's do our objective and we'll talk about the lesson for today. We're gonna take a field trip to Verona, Italy to see the place where Romeo and Juliet lived. I'm going to take you on this field trip under the water. Okay, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? I see a shark. Whoa! Whoa! It allowed us to go somewhere we wouldn't normally be able to go. Are we in China? This is the Great Wall of China. We got to see the place itself so we could actually understand what she was talking about. How long would it take to walk the length of the Great Wall of China? So much more enriching than just showing them a picture or just having them read about it. This device can actually make us go to places that we've never been before. It brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see, so you know that it's never going to end. Okay. I'll just wrap up with a final remark that it's a great privilege to work on this project. It's very inspiring to work with global culture. Of course, we can't do anything if that culture doesn't exist, if it's not preserved and protected. So I'll make way for what you've been waiting for this evening, and thank you for your time.